Hey guys, welcome back to Beach and Fishing. Paul here again with you, Beach and Fishing, my site and channel where I talk about fishing, all to do with surf fishing, beach fishing, kayak fishing, and any other type of fishing that you can think of. And today I'm going to talk about, I was reminiscing with a friend of mine on the weekend and we were talking about fishing because I was explaining my site to him and stuff. And we we're talking about all the things that we've sort of messed up in our times and all the learnings that we've got. So today I just wanted to run through with you five, the five surf fishing mistakes we've all made. And we've all made them at different times. You know who you are. I know who I am. I know I've made every one of them. Which is why I've tried to keep this post and this video quite light. I mean, it's it's not, this whole site is not designed to be a, you know, this is how you fish and this is a be all end all. Because I guarantee you that everything that I talk about as a mistake in my post, others have <coughs> done the same thing and had great success. So again, comment below if, if my mistakes weren't mistakes for you or if you got other mistakes or whatever. Anyway, let's go through the five mistakes that I've made and we've, and we've all made at times. Now the first one is throwing your line in anywhere when you get to the beach. So you get to the beach and as I've written in the post, and I won't just sit here and regurgitate all those stories, but you know, I went with my dad, we threw the lines into the water, we stood there and stood there and stood there and stood there while the guy 10, 15 minutes up the beach was catching fish. We asked him on the way out which bait he was using, exactly the same bait in exactly the same packet sort bought from exactly the same shop. Wasn't until I got back and had a look at the beach and then just took note and then a few years later I realised why he was catching the fish and we weren't is because he was in a gutter. Now, if you go to a, any surf beach, the first thing you need to do, in my opinion, to avoid this mistake is look for a gutter or a hole. Now, I'll show you in the post a picture. It's probably not the best one, but it's the best one I could find. You can see there, you've got the shore. Then at the back here where these waves are, you've got a, and you can see the waves there, you've got a sandbank. In the middle here is a deep trench or a you know, long, long hole, or what we call a gutter. If you're standing here and up there there's no gutter and here there's a gutter, throw fish in here, in this point in here. That is where the fish hang out. They go through because food settles at the bottom there. It's a bit deeper for them, so they're a bit more protected. You'll get bigger fish in there because they can fit. And you don't have to cast as far. It's great for taking kids and stuff too as well. So if you're just going to throw on a surf, yes, you'll catch fish. Where we go, you'll catch uh, some species we call whiting, dart. Taylor, you'll catch them in the in the just the surf in the Taylor, especially like the the uh, foamy whitewash surf. That said, nine times out of ten, if you find a gutter, you'll have a lot more chance of catching fish. And this comes from a place we used to fish, where if you weren't in a gutter, you just caught nothing. So the first mistake we will make is just going down throwing anywhere. And that also includes looking for areas like rocks and branches if they're there, coral. If you're just going to throw anywhere and you're throwing in the rocks, chance they can get a lot more snags and the like as well. So mistake number one, look for somewhere decent to throw, or not looking for somewhere decent to throw it. The second mistake, something we've all done, and this is, I have, this is probably the only time that I'm going to point the finger and have some decent rules. Rules are never use the same tackle that you used last last fishing trip, especially hooks, and never put used equipment back in your clean tackle box. Used hooks are blunt. You can touch them, they even feel sharp, but trust me, they're blunt. If you use a new hook every time you go fishing, and I know hooks can be expensive, but if you use a new hook every time you go fishing, you've got way more chance of catching a fish because you know around a fish mouth's quite strong. So if the hook is blunt, it's not gonna it's not gonna pierce the membrane around the fish's mouth. So use a sharp hook. Swivels, if they're a bit rusty or a bit old, will snap. Uh, sinkers are fine, reuse sinkers as much as you like. But the swivels and the hooks, don't use the same ones you used last trip, last yeah, last trip. And that's a mistake that we've all made. I've lost fish because of it. If you use a blunt hook or you use an old hook, you're gonna have problems. And if you put a dirty hook back into your, your tackle box, knowing that it's been in salt water, we're talking about surf fishing here, and it's been in salt water, you drop it back in your, your tackle box, it is going to rust, and that rust will spread out through your tackle box. Trust me, if you put a, a, a hook that's been in salt water in a little compartment with three other hooks, 
go back in three weeks time, two weeks time, and they'll all be rusty, just the way it is. Lures I know, if you wanna use lures on more than one trip, especially if you haven't caught fish on it, because lures can be hundreds of dollars, just make sure you rinse them out, and I haven't written this in the post, but just make sure you rinse them out properly when you get home, so that you are not um, contaminating the rest of your, your tackle box. And that leads us on to number three, which is going unprepared. So, how I work is, and I had it here and I put it all away because I cleaned up my office area yesterday. Um, I take a little tackle box with me. I have a backpack. Well, I had a backpack till it broke, but I have a backpack generally. Um, and I take a little tackle box with me. In that little tackle box, I just take enough tackle for the next trip. I've got a big tackle box in the garage that has all the stuff that I've managed to purchase over the last number of years. Drive my wife crazy whenever we go to the department store to buy something for the home or the play studio that we own or anything like that. She runs off and does that and I sneak into the sneak into the tackle section. I'll just buy it like a $3 packet of hooks or a packet of sinkers or some, uh, if they got braid on special, I'll buy that or a pair of plies if mine is starting to get a bit rusty or stick or whatever. So I've got a tackle, big tackle box in there, just choppers with, that's an Australian term, is it choppers? Just completely full of, tackle if i take all that to the beach with me every time and keep opening the box to get more stuff out in my hands are wet and salty and whatever they're going to rust so my advice is to just take enough tackle that you've got and that leads me into as i mentioned the mistake i've made often is going unprepared so what i do now is i get prepared for the next trip on the last trip so you come home you make sure there's no dirty or used tackle in your box make sure it's dry, you rinse your rod off, you rinse your reel off, you rinse your tools off, rinse any lures off that you want to keep, anything like that. You rinse everything because, again, it's been in, in salty conditions. And then I once it's dry, I pack it all back in the backpack, have it sitting there with my rod and reel on the rack, ready to go. That way, if we get a call, and we'll talk about this again next, it's going at the wrong time, but if I get a call saying, let's go, I can pick everything up I need. If you like to take a chair with you, have the chair there ready to go. If you like to take an esky, have the esky ready to go. Because there's nothing worse than getting to the beach. And <clears throat> this is where the unpreparedness comes from. You get to the beach, you've, you've got no hooks. So you lose your hook or a fish swallows the hook and you can't get it out. You've got no hooks. And if you're on your own, that's fine if you've got others because you can borrow theirs. But if you're on your own, no hook. Or if you need pliers and you haven't got your pliers with you because you've got to put your pliers in. Or you haven't got a knife because you've got to put your knife in. Um, you get there and you haven't got your rod holder and you're holding a big heavy rod or you want to fish with two rods, a big one for the big fish and a little one to mess around on lures and stuff and you've got your rod holder. So going unprepared is where you forget all those things. It just makes things that little bit difficult. So be prepared, get everything ready for the next trip. I'm not, I'm a bit fastidious about it. You don't have to be that level. Just make sure everything's in the right spot so you know where to grab it all before you go. Which leads me, as I mentioned before, about that last minute call up, going at the wrong time. Now, this is definitely one where if I'm going to get comments on, no, nah, that's, you're wrong. This could be the one that I think I could get it on, which is people at the work. I've done a lot of research for this site and just reading in general on fishing. There's two school, big schools of thought on it. There is a school of thought that says, you go by the tide. If the tide is high or the tide is low on the change of tide, high tide, you get all the good gutters. Low tide, you get exposure of structures. So you can fish around rocks or around coral because you can see it, you know, where to cast to and all that sort of stuff. That's one side of the fence. The other side of the fence is only go first thing in the morning and only go last thing in the afternoon, the hour before and after dawn or the hour before and after dusk. <clears throat> I know for us, even at high tide, if we go in the middle of the day, you, you never catch as much as you would, or we do, if we go dusk on high low tide, or dawn, dawn on high low tide, or dusk on high low tide. So I, I agree with both sides of the fence. We find here, going at early morning or late in the afternoon, when the tides are right, works best for us. So the mistake of going at the wrong time, I mean, when you're camping, we've gone down, you know, let's go for a fish, 10 o'clock in the morning, bright sunshine, mid-tide, people everywhere, you get nothing. You just don't catch anything. So think about the, in the conditions where you are, think about how the gutters work, think about how, where the gutters are, 
I mean, if you want to go for a fish in the middle of the day, I mean, you're still out in the beautiful sunshine, you're standing at the beach, you're fishing, you're not at work, you're not at home doing chores, just go fishing. But picking the right time for the beach that you're at is a crucial tip as well. So just that's a mistake we've made, not going at the right time. And lastly, and this is an interesting one again, because if you do a search, and I haven't got any on my site yet, but I guarantee you I will, best bait for surf fishing, best bait for reef, for reef fishing, best bait for this, for that, and everything else. Like surf fishing, the best baits, squid, worms, pilchards, prawns, um, those sort of things are all great baits. But what if they're not the local bait? And what I mean by that is one beach we go to here, we dig up little pippies, which are little, um, like tiny little clams that we catch. They're only about that big. You crack them on the top of your rod, you put them on the hook, you'll catch way more fish with them than we will even with sea worms if we buy sea worms from the beach. Another place we go, we pump yabbies. Yabbies are a little, um, like a little really, really soft, small crayfish and you put them on your hook when we go out into the kayaks and you'll catch way more fish on them than we will on, again, worms or squid or prawns. You'll still catch them on them, but if you're using local bait, you've got a better opportunity to catch more because that's what the fish have. I mean, it, those of you who travel, I mean, you go to, especially if you travel overseas, Australians notice a lot when we travel overseas because we're so isolated. You know, you go overseas and you want a sausage roll if you're watching this in any other country in Australia, see if you can comment and tell me what a sausage roll is, or see if you can comment and tell me what a, you know, we have tacos here that are different than what tacos are in the US. You know, so our, our local food is different than the local food in different countries. And that's a very roundabout way of saying fish are the same. They like that they know the local food. So if you push something past their nose that they're not used to having, they might not take it. So be aware of that. Of course, squid and prawns will have that odor and smell to them. So they'll, you, you will catch them. I mean, I don't know how many times have you caught fish on a bait that you're not supposed to catch it on. We went out in, out in a, I went out in a boat into the you know deep sea fishing the other week and we were catching snapper with pilchards. And I was always told you'll never catch snap, snapper with pilchards on a gang hook. We had two gang hooks, pilchards, bringing them in like nobody's business. Never had it before. Always told you couldn't do it, but we did. So, and lures are the same, fish like lures, flathead we use, we use soft plastics. I'm in a couple of Facebook groups, they'll always tell you that, you know, they catch, flat, you'll only catch flathead on double clutch lures, or you'll only catch flathead on soft plastics. I catch flathead on white bait. I put that in the, in the, in the um, Facebook group, caught a couple of flathead on white bait today. No, no. Catch flat, I catch brim on white bait as well. There's no white bait in the, naturally in the in the river we fish in, but I still catch brim on them. So there's always variations, but I'll also catch just as many, or if not more, on the local bait, which is yabbies. So keep to your local bait if you can. By all means, take the other bait because you can't always get it. Use your lures as fit, but always, if you neglect the no local bait, that's a mistake we've made as well. That's it, guys. That's my five mistakes I've made. Um, throwing it in anywhere in the beach, look for your gutters. Using old tackle, that is my number one no-no. Don't use old tackle. The hooks go blunt and the swivel snap. Don't use old tackle. Um, don't go unprepared because you'll forget things and if you're missing the right tackle, if you've got the wrong hooks, you'll end up with the wrong hooks and you won't catch the fish. Try and go at the right time. As I mentioned, we always go um, high and low tides in early morning or late afternoon. High tide at, at Full moon is one we always like. And don't neglect your local, local bait. That's it. If you're watching this within YouTube, please like and subscribe to my channel. That way, if you subscribe, I can keep you up to date with all the things I've come up with, such as the best bait for surf fishing and the like. Um, if you're watching this within a post, if you have other mistakes you've made or you disagree with any of my mistakes, I'd love to hear if you disagree with, with what I've written here, if you've had areas where going in the middle of the day at mid-tide works well or fishing in just the plain surf and not looking for gutters works well for you. Love to hear from you. Um, if you need any help with sourcing information, you want advice on any information or to know about inform in any particular products, please comment below. We'd love to hear from you. I'd love to help you out. Okay, guys, thanks for that. Chat to you soon. Happy fishing. Bye.